Well, let's take a look at organizing qualitative data. Qualitative is like categories, remember? First thing we'll talk about is the uh, frequency distribution. This lists each category of data and number of times occurs for each category. For example, if I had a uh, hair color and um, let's say my first one is brunette, assuming I'm spelling these right, um, then blonde, and then black, and then red. So that's the different hair colors. Uh, maybe I'll go around the room and ask how many uh, brunettes, uh, or um, I count how many brunettes. So I find there's 12. And so I go around the room, find there's five blondes, there's uh, six black hair, and two with red hair. This is a frequency distribution. Now we have a relative frequency, which is equal to the frequency divided by the sum of all frequencies. So to create the relative frequency, I'm going to add these together. 12 plus 5 is 17, plus 2 is 19, and 25. 25. So then our relative frequency we're going to take uh, 12, take each one of these values, divide by our total. And actually let me make that a little, a little bit smaller. So I take 12, divide by 25, and usually multiply it by 100 to get it in percent form. This one would be 5 divided by 25 times 100. This one would be 6 divided by 25 times 100. This one would be 2 divided by 25 times 100. Okay, now if I were to actually uh, do these, um, you know, that cancels with this. Both of them are divisible by 25, so that would give me 48%. Basically, I multiply this by 4. Uh, if I went through and do the math here, this would cancel that, cancel, give me a 4, so this would be 20%. This would be 24%, and this one would be 8%. Let me add those to see if I add it correctly. Uh, 32, uh, 72, 80, 100. Okay, that's our relative frequency. Now, the relative frequency distribution... Um, List each category of data together with the relative frequency. So if we include the hair color here with the relative frequency we just found, that's our distribution. Now to do this in Excel, uh, let's look at an example. This is 2010, but I'm sure you can do something very similar with um, pretty much all the versions of Excel. Um, if I list down the hair color, red, blonde, brunette, blonde, blonde, red, red, brunette, 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 um, black, black, red, black, and brunette. Okay, so my data is in um, A1, my first cell, and it goes through A15. Okay, so I want to uh, build my distribution over here. Well, I got my hair color, and here's my frequency. So I'm gonna do um, red, or no, wait, what was first? Brunette, then blonde, and then I had black, I think, and then I had red. Now, if I do equals and uh, type count if, do a beginning parentheses, and then a range. So it's looking for a1 colon a15. That's uh, from my beginning cell to my ending cell. Then comma, and then quote, quotes around this, and then I'll type red. And then end parentheses. What this will do is it'll go through A1 through A15, and it'll count all the ones that say red. Red. Except for I'm on a brunette aisle. Okay, let's try that again. Brunette. Two, three, there you go. This one should be blonde. Now, um, it's going to be the same type of thing. We're going to do equals, count if, then A1 colon A15, 
comma, then blonde, with quotes around it, and then uh, in parentheses. Equals count if um, a1 colon a15 comma and then quotes and then black. Now, if I'm if I was clever with this, I, I could fill down and and have it refer to the hair color and let the the column to the left. But I'm just wanting to show you a lot of examples of the count if, so you see how to do it. Then this one would be count if a1 or wait a minute a1 colon a15 comma then quotes, and then red, in quotes, in parentheses. You notice it doesn't have to be uppercase. It can be uh, lowercase for the count if. Now, this is dynamic. So if I come over here and this changes every month, I don't have to re-add them at all. Like if this one is brunette, you see it automatically adjusts the numbers. So that works out great. Now, our relative frequency. If I click down here at the very bottom, and um, in my home tab, I want to click the little uh, E looking thing. That's um, sigma. That's uppercase sigma. If I click that, it'll add uh, these up. Now it tries to guess what you want to add together. So if you don't want D2 through D5, you type in whatever range you want. And then you can do it enter or press this uh, little green check mark. And that adds up for total. Okay, so let's look at our relative frequency. I'm going to do an equals. And. Um, I want to divide uh, D2, that's where 6 is, by the total. The total is down there at D6. So I'm going to do a dollar sign D, dollar sign 6, then times 100. Now what the D2 does is um, it refers to the cell immediately to the left. When I put the dollar sign around D and dollar sign to 6, that's absolute referencing. It means that no matter what, as I fill down this formula, it'll always refer to D6. Then the times 100 just changes it to more of a percent form. Then press enter. Now if I choose this cell, E2, and put my mouse in the lower right hand corner and click with my left mouse button and hold down and drag, it'll fill this in for me. If I click down here, I uh, see my formula says equals D3 divided by D6. I'm going to hit escape to get out of that. And then I click this one. And see how this says equals D4 divided by D6. So no matter what, as I filled it down, each one of these is referring to D6. So that's how you build your relative frequency in Excel. Okay, we got a bar graph. This is constructed by labeling each category of data on a horizontal axis and a frequency or relative frequency of the category on a vertical axis. Um, Okay, so let's let's build that for um for our data here. And it doesn't matter which one you choose. Um I'm going to choose the frequency. Choosing the relative frequency will give you the same graph over here. Okay, so here's my brunette. Here's my blonde. Here's my black. And here's my red. Now my highest frequency is 12, which is good. Um, 12 that I can work with. You want to choose a number you can easily divide. So if it's not already even, make it even. You know, choose the next one up that's even. Because uh, if we if we're doing it by hand, we're dividing. Uh, 12 divided by 2 is 6. So halfway up is 6, and halfway up to 6 is 3, and then halfway in between 6 and 12 is 9. Okay, our first one, brunette. That bar is going to go up to 12, like that. Now our blonde is going to go up to five, which um, three maybe about right there. Black is going to go up to six, which is right there, and red is going to go up to two, which maybe is right there. And that would be our bar graph. Now again. If I chose relative frequency, the graph would look exactly the same, but over here I'd have 48%, 24, uh, 12, and then 36%. So, but then that is exactly the same. Okay, let's look at how to do this in uh, Excel. Uh, bar graph from frequency distribution. It says put categories in column A, frequencies in column B. Now they don't have to be in column A and column B. See how I have uh, these right here? This is in column C and this is in column D, but that's okay. 
it says highlight them. So if I click these and highlight them, that's what step two says. Then it says insert tab, column, 2D, clustered column. So the insert tab, column, and then the first one here says um, uh, clustered column. If I choose that, that'll give me my, my histogram. Let me change something here. Change that to red. You'll notice something. As I change these, it dynamically changes my, my um, bar graph over there, so that's perfect. Now, um, that's just how to create a very basic one. After you got this created, you got this selected, there's a design tab up here where you can change various design elements about it. And there's a layout tab where you can also change some other items. So you can also click these and then delete them or right click them and choose, you know, the different options. Now we've got a Pareto chart. This is a bar graph whose bars are drawn in decreasing order of frequency or relative frequency. So when I was drawing this, um, black would have went first because it is more frequency-wise. That's a Pareto chart. Side-by-side -side bar graph compares two data sets. Example that. If I got brunette here, and I got uh, one that's like this, and then right, one right beside it is like this. Maybe this is 2012 and this one was 2011. And then over here for the blonde, I also have two. And this first one's 2012 and this is 2011. So it allows you to see per category uh, a comparison from like one year to another year, as an example. And then we've got a pie chart. Circle divided into sectors. Each sector represents a category of data. The area of each sector is proportional to the frequency. So let me see if I can do this one. Okay. Screwed this up in class. Um, see if I do any better here. <laughs> I couldn't eyeball these very well. Uh, okay, I split it exactly half. Each piece here is 50%. Now, brunette is a little bit less than 50%. So here's my center. A little bit less than 50%. Maybe it would be that right there. So that's my brunette. My next biggest one is black, which is 24%. Well, if I come over here, um, if I split that in half, this is 25%. 24% will be a little bit less than that. Just a little bit. So that's my black. And for my uh, brunette is 20%. Uh, well, if this is, um, well, if this here is 24%, then this has to be 26%. So um, I'm just going to guess here. It's a little bit too much. Try again. Okay. Let's say that. Okay, so this 20% here. Um, would be our blonde. And this amount here would be our red. Now, I'm showing this by hand, but you do not want to spend a whole lot of time on this by hand. If you go into a business and you hand draw a pie chart, you turn it in a meeting, well, they'll be firing you pretty soon. Uh, you can count on it. Now, if you're looking to be fired, that's, that's pretty much how you go about doing it. Well, let's look at how the real world does it. Um, pie chart from frequency distribution. It says put categories in column A, frequencies in column B. Well, we already have that here. Uh, got the categories here and frequencies here. Highlight them. So if I highlight these, then it says do an insert tab, then pi pi. So I choose my insert tab, I choose the pi option, and the first one is pi. So insert pi pi, and that gives us this. Now that's our very basic one. Again, if you want to play with it and get a little bit of better results, you can come over here and click various ones. Um, so if you like that, it shows that. If you click this, it'll show those. Um, so that's kind of up to you. 
And you can come, come here and click your title and say uh, hair color. So a lot of different customizations you can do with that. Again, this is dynamic, so as, as items change here, you'll see this change. But that's how the that's how you do it in the real world, and this is what they're looking for. They're not looking for something drawn with crayons. And I think that's the last slide to this. So let me stop the recorder. other record.